And this is the final hard physics slide, and I'll quickly get off of this, but the a 1% change is, is like changing the emissivity of the Earth by 1%. So it turns out that here are two other interesting guys that you should know about. One of them is uh, Josef Stefan. He, he's the only Slovenian physicist I ever heard of, but he was a great one. And he was the one who discovered this uh, F equals epsilon sigma t to the fourth, that first equation there. So it's called the Stefan Boltzmann equation because he made another important discovery. He discovered this graduate student, Boltzmann. <laughs> and he said to Boltzmann, I have measured how radiation goes into space and it goes as the fourth power of the temperature. That's a huge effect, you know, because that means if you double the temperature, you increase radiation by two to the fourth by 16, you know. So it's an amazing factor. But Boltzmann couldn't figure out why would it be the fourth power. And so he assigned this poor student, who turned out to be not such a poor student, uh, the job of well, where, where does the factor of four come from? And he solved the problem. It turned out, for those of you who have a science background, it, it came from simple electromagnetic theory, which had just been developed by Maxwell, and from thermodynamics. So it's, it's something where you can derive that if you're Boltzmann in four or five lines. It's, a, it's an amazing feat. But you can't get the coefficients in front of it, but you get the fourth power. And the, the result of that is that a 1% change in radiation to space is a quarter percent, that same factor of four, but it goes in the denominator, a quarter percent change in temperature, absolute temperature. And so you can do the calculation for warming in your head because the absolute temperature there is surface is about 300 Kelvin. A quarter percent of 300 Kelvin is, or if I put in the right number, it's about 0.75, it's actually 0.71 if I put in all the correct values. So the, the direct warming from CO2 is less than one degree, 0.7 degrees, very small. And uh, this is a problem if you're a climate scientist because nobody cares if it's 0.7 degrees. You can't feel 0.7 degrees, the air conditioner doesn't trip on and off if you have 0.7 degrees. So um, what to do? Uh, well, you invoke huge positive feedbacks in all of these UN climate models. So uh, instead of acting like a, a normal system, somehow just the 0.7 degrees gets multiplied by factors of three or four or five, <laughs> even 10 in some cases that uh, you, it's almost impossible to justify this idea of a positive feedback, but you need it, otherwise CO2 is too wimpy to be worried about. So, you, so they've got this problem that the first step, how much does CO2 affect radiation to space, it almost doesn't affect it. So you need something in the second step to change this radiation to space into a temperature that's scary, and that's the positive feedback. Um, the problem with positive feedback is this guy here. This is uh, a French chemist, Le Chatelier. And Le Chatelier noted that in most natural processes in nature, feedbacks are negative. You know, positive feedbacks almost never occur. And yet we're assuming there's a positive feedback. Yeah. If we don't assume a positive feedback, we don't get money for our laboratory next year because nobody's worried. 